B I O with a B I O, B I O with a B I O, birdie, 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 welcome. Welcome to another virtual biology camp lecture. Today we're going to be discussing mutations. No, Alex, not X-Men mutants. I'm referring to mutations that may occur due to mistakes or errors within genes, which we refer to as gene mutations. So make sure that you take good notes. Let's first start by looking at what a mutation is. Yes, that's right, Alex. A mutation is one that is caused due to changes to the DNA, which may occur during DNA replication, resulting in incorrect protein instructions, thus possibly affecting the cell's function. Great question, Alex. We do have enzyme whose role is to proofread and check for errors during these important cellular processes. However, sometimes mistakes just happen and they are simply missed, which results in the DNA being altered. Other times, mutations may occur due to environmental factors such as ultraviolet radiation from the sun or due to mutagens, which are chemicals that may cause DNA to be altered. Okay, Alex, enough with the X-Men references. As we mentioned before, mutations will result in incorrect protein instructions because of a change in a gene or perhaps the entire chromosome, which is why we have two main categories for mutations. That's right, Alex, gene mutations are those mistakes in DNA that affect a gene. Chromosomal mutations are those that affect the number or structure of chromosomes. In today's lecture, we're going to be focusing primarily on gene mutations, and then in later lectures, we will discuss chromosomal mutations, which may occur during cell division. Yes, that's right, Alex. Typically, mutations that affect a single gene tend to happen while DNA is being copied. Good question, Alex. As we have previously mentioned, genetic information found in DNA determines the traits or characteristics of an organism. Yes, that's right, Alex. This means that if something alters the nucleotide sequence in the DNA, it will affect the protein synthesis as well. You're right, Alex. Since DNA is used as a template for mRNA during transcription, that means if DNA is incorrect, the mRNA-based sequence will be incorrect as well. Right again, Alex, the incorrect sequence of bases in mRNA will be translated during translation, meaning the incorrect anticodons found on tRNA will bond to the incorrect codons from mRNA, thus giving the wrong amino acid sequence. Yeah, something like that, Alex. Basically, the wrong amino acid sequence will result in the wrong ingredients for the desired protein, which may or may not result in a different protein. Great way to summarize it, Alex. Basically, a change in DNA may result in the wrong codons, which results in the wrong amino acid sequence, which may further result in a wrong or malfunctioning protein. Now, there are other instances depending on what cell's DNA was affected, in which the mutation may not only alter the organism's characteristics, but it may also be carried from one generation to the next. Um, not exactly what I meant, Alex. Basically, some mutations, depending on the location of the cell, may give rise to new traits that may or may not have a harmful effect to the health of the organism and their offspring, which is why mutations can be further classified as germline or somatic mutations based on the affected cell type. Germline mutations occur in gametes, which affect the offspring, but somatic mutations, on the other hand, only affect the cells of the organism. We're going to discuss these in later lectures in more details, but for now, we're going to focus primarily on mutations affecting one gene, which we refer to as gene mutations. There are two main types of gene mutations that you must be familiar with. The first are known as point mutations. Yes, that's right, Alex. Point mutations are basically mutations that occur in one single point, meaning they are mistakes involving one nucleotide. For instance, the most common example of a point mutation would be a base substitution mutation. You got it, Alex. A base substitution is basically when one nucleotide is substituted for another, like seen in this image. Now notice, the original DNA sequence has a T, what effect will this mutation have on this organism? Not exactly, Alex. The mutation may or may not have a huge effect on the organism. It all depends on how this mutation affected the protein for which it codes for. For instance, let's take a look at this next example. Here we have a normal hemoglobin DNA, which is the protein found in red blood cells. 
Yes, that's right, Alex. This point mutation substitutes A for T, which only affects one codon, resulting in only one amino acid to be affected. Now, in this case, it changes the normal amino acid, glutamic acid, into valine. Now, you would think that changing only one amino acid would not have much of an impact, but in fact, this substitution affects the organisms greatly by causing the red blood cells to have a sickled shape. Yes, Alex, that's exactly why this disorder is known as sickle cell and because the red blood cells have an abnormal sickle look. We actually refer to this type of point mutation's outcome as a missense mutation. Yeah, I guess that's a good way to think of it. This type of outcome will cause the amino acid sequence to not make sense anymore due to this point mutation. Um, sure, let's go with that. Now, it's important to note that not all mutations will have drastic effects like this one. There are actually some mutations that may not affect the protein. For instance, take a look at this example. Great job, Alex. The G has been substituted with an A, which caused the mRNA codon to change from GGC to GGU. So, what does this mean? You got it, Alex. The codons may have changed, however, both seem to code for the same amino acid, glycine, meaning the protein is not affected by this mutation, which is why we call this type of mutation outcome as a silent mutation. Yes, Alex, good way to remember it. Silent mutations often go unnoticed because the amino acid sequence isn't actually affected. However, there are other possible mutation outcomes which may have a major effect on the protein, such as causing a premature termination of the protein's production. For instance, take a look at this next example. What do you notice? That's right, Alex. In this base substitution, the G is replaced with a C, causing the mRNA codon to change from thyrosine to stop. Yes, Alex, that's a great way to visualize it. This stop codon basically signals the cell to stop producing the protein, which is usually seen at the end of the mRNA codon sequence. But in this case, this stop codon appears before the mRNA sequence is complete. So what does that mean? You got it, Alex. This type of mutation outcome will cause the amino acid sequence to be incomplete, which is why we refer to this mutation outcome as a nonsense mutation. Great way to think of it, Alex. Nonsense mutations cause the protein to stop production before it is time to stop, which makes no sense at all. Overall, you just need to keep in mind that base pair substitutions are a type of point mutations which only affect one amino acid. Now, let's take a look at a gene mutation that may affect many amino acids with just one mistake in the gene. We call these frame shift mutations. Frame shift mutations basically change many amino acids in a peptide chain by shifting the entire sequence of codons when one nucleotide is inserted or deleted by mistake. Sure, Alex, that's a good way to think of it. For instance, let's take this DNA sequence as an example. Let's say A is inserted, causing the amino acid sequence to change. Yes, that's right, Alex. Because of this new insertion, it will cause all of the bases to shift over, giving you a new codon on sequence, resulting in a different amino acid sequence, thus possibly affecting the protein. Good job, Alex. We refer to this type of frame shift mutation as a base insertion because a base pair is inserted into the base sequence by mistake. Yes, Alex, the same goes for mistakes such as a base deletion, causing the codons to now be different, resulting once again in a different amino acid sequence and possibly affecting the protein as well. As you can see, frame shift mutations can cause a lot of damage to the protein, possibly causing the protein to be altered completely into something else or not functioning at all. Let's take a look at the big picture of mutations. Now, mutations that are found in somatic cells, which are non-sex cells, are called somatic mutations. And those found in sex cells are called germline mutations, which may affect the offspring. That's right, Alex. Now, as for different types of mutations, well, these can be divided into two categories depending on how much genetic information was affected. That's right, Alex. Gene mutations are those that affect a single gene, and chromosomal mutations affect the number or structure of chromosomes. 
Now, focusing on gene mutations, these can be subdivided into point mutations and frame shift mutations. You got it, Alex. The point mutations affect a single point in the DNA sequence of a gene because they tend to affect only one nucleotide, such as that seen in substitution mutations. Now, as for frame shift mutations, these tend to affect portions of the DNA sequence that follow the location of the mutation because the DNA sequence is going to be shifted over due to that change in the DNA, such as that seen in insertions and deletions. Great way to sum it up, Alex. Base substitutions, insertions, and deletions affect only a single gene or segment of the DNA in comparison to a chromosomal mutation which affects an entire chromosome or number of chromosomes. This concludes our virtual biology lecture on gene mutations. Well, that's it. Have a great one.